Hey everyone, it's Melissa. Today's video is about hacks and workarounds that I have discovered over the years. Now, when you've been doing makeup a really long time or your skincare or just taking care of yourself when you're older, you come across things that don't quite work the way you want to. Maybe it drips, maybe it smudges, maybe it droops, maybe it doesn't hold its end of the bargain that you think it should. So you you kind of think about, well, what can I do to make it work? That's a workaround or a hack. Now we've all had to do it in the past, you know, when things just haven't worked out. We've spent money on a product or know that we need to do a certain beauty thing, but it, we can't quite get it to work for us, so we have all tweaked, tweaked things to work for us. So, uh, over the years, you know, I have listened to other people and just doing things myself, I, I have a few of them that I do. And uh, I have two today and then kind of one to talk about dealing with naoxin and some hints about it. Uh, but I, I find in my everyday life, I do things like probably all of you all do a little bit differently maybe sometimes in what the way other people do. Like when I wash my face, and I have hacks all around me, I've noticed, and I will do more later on, but like when I wash my face, I have noticed that I like to look down into this mirror. I've got this mirror and I like to pull, I like to take my washcloth and I like to pull up my skin as I'm looking down. But I want that angle of that mirror to be just right. I don't want it to be too this way or too much that way. I want the angle to be right to get the right amount of pull up on my skin. I know that's silly, but that's what I do. So I keep my mirror. I wonder if that's why I like my things around me because I like that mirror, mirror kept at a certain angle and not moved. So <laughs> I have it in the corner in my counter in the bathroom at the certain angle that I want it. So uh, another one I noticed this morning when, uh, when I set my hair on hot rollers, I've got these great big hot rollers and great big jumbo ones and so the clips aren't big enough to go around and they do and they sort of hold them but you have to hold your head really steady so i just use i have a bunch of these that i hold my hair up with all the time because I'm, I'm always putting my hair up and i have a bunch of these and i've noticed that these will go around and hold a little bit firmer so that's a workaround that's a hack Okay, so two of them that I have today. The first one has to do with eyeshadow. Now you read and you hear that on the color wheel, you're supposed to use eyeshadow that is the opposite of what your eye color is. So if you have blue eyes, you're supposed to wear orange eyeshadow. If you have green eyes, you're supposed to wear like red, purple, pink. Now, when you get older, and older <laughs> those colors can look a little harsh a little garish on you i have noticed it more and more as i get older so say i want my eyes to look green then i could use red as a contrast but red on my eyelids well that just makes me look i have pink eye it makes me look ill so what i have done is it kind of harkens back to high school i had friends that did beauty pageants and they would always put red on the inside of their eyes and i remember asking them why and they said it helped them their eyes to look brighter and to make make their gaze look a little more straightforward i don't know but anyway that's what they would always tell me and I, it stuck with me so if i want my eyes to look green uh, here's an example i take a little tiny real techniques brush but now you can do this any place but i like to take just a touch of red uh, like this red right here this is a tardis pro palette just a little bit of that that and put it right here on my inner lid now not my inner corner like right here because you know i have darkness there that would look silly to have red there but you know i have darkness there so i put concealer there but right here on the inside, let me get my mirror, right there, just a tiny bit right there, and just a tiny bit underneath here, right there, right there. Just those little touches will just make my eyes pop because 
it's subtle but it is the opposite on the color wheel it makes a contrast to my eye color so i can make my eyes neutral and i usually do this last i'll make my eyes look you know in my regular eyeshadow colors then i will take a little bit of a contrast color and just do it right there and right there just a tad not even a quarter of an inch maybe a little tiny eighth of an inch and then i take the other end and blend it into my regular eyeshadow and i really just that tiny bit will really add some uh definition to my eyes i don't know why now you could uh take this and do a contrasting color like as your eyeliner right here in the outer v uh, just a little bit on the outer bit right here or you could do it in the middle of your lid like the halo color just adding that little bit I just I like to add it right here on the inner section of my eyeballs right there not the inner eye but you know right there on the eyeballs a little bit just just right there at the edge and then blend it just but you could experiment around on placement you know put your eyeshadow on and then try it in different areas and see what that looks like or next time try it just in the middle of your eye and see what that looks like for some reason mine seems to work best just right there at the inner corner so that's what i do uh, if i want my eyes to look blue i will use orange uh, people with oh people with well you know whatever color your eyes are a, a color that will make a contrast you know if you've got that if you've got dark brown eyes if you use a red or a deep burgundy uh you know that bring can help bring out amber tones just whatever you know brings out your eye color that might be garish that might be too bold to use as you get you know really old <laughs> might be too old too bold just using that as a touch really makes a difference try it see what you think you know it may not it may not be something that works for you but i have really noticed a difference when i do that this is my second hack as a lot of you noticed i wear a lot of off the shoulder tops i know they're not really in style right now but i have a bunch of them i'm not going to throw them away so i wear them and people ask me what i do about a bra now i am not well endowed in the boobage department i'm just not and when you are built smaller like that a strapless bra tends to start slipping down it's hard when you don't have anything much to hold them up to keep them up to keep a bra up so uh, you know that can be a dilemma so what i do is i take a uh i buy a convertible bra convertible bras are bras that come with straps but they're detachable they've got two hooks on them and excuse my nails i, ch I chew on my nails so badly um they come with little hooks with little places where you can hook the other one in and that comes in handy like that okay so you've got little hooks and you've got a way to make it tighter or looser so what i do is i take one of the straps because i have a narrow rib cage if you have a wider rib cage you could put two straps together and then adjust the length of it okay so you take one or two however much you need and put it at the right right length and you put it on the band you reinforce the band underneath the bottom band of the bra you hook it and you fit it along that bra the band of that bra underneath you know underneath the boobs there and so that keeps the bra up and it keeps things in place and they don't slip course you do it underneath your sweater you don't go out with this strap on you do it underneath your sweater or your shirt and put it right on that band of that bra that band underneath your boobs this will put another extra band on there and i tell you you'll be surprised at how well it works and because I, I have i mean you know you've been in the grocery store and y'all know what i'm talking about where you can start you're like talking to somebody and you can feel it start slipping down so you do the do the shoulders flex your shoulders flex your chest on each side to try to get each side up or you do the old crossing your arms and pushing it up or even more casual the old one one arm while the other one's on the chin contemplating what they're saying and you're pulling it up down here trying to hold it up you know what i'm talking about and that stops it 
I, I go all day long without having to fiddle with my bra. So that's what I do. I, take, I just take those straps that come with them and you put them to good use. Now, don't get it so tight that, you know, you, it's going to cut off your circulation or you can't breathe. Just make it enough to reinforce underneath that band underneath. Uh, snug, but not too tight. And, you know, you may have to fiddle with it a little bit. Snug, but not too tight. Make sure you can breathe properly, especially with you wearing your masks and stuff. But that really does help to reinforce it. But now, uh, you well, very well endowed women. I don't know if this will work for you, but it's going to probably work a little better than just the bra, the strapless bra itself. It's going to help a little bit more. I don't know if it'll be enough to hold your girls up, but it'll help a little bit, you know. So that's my hint about the strapless bra. Okay, my final one is just kind of talking about some a few little problems with the nioxin system. Not problems, but things that kind of have to work with. Uh, the nioxin system comes with shampoo, conditioner, and a leave-in treatment that you use, you know, and it's for hair loss. I've been using it for a long time. I love it. I just think it works beautifully on my hair. It stimulates and tingles on my scalp, and it just seems to help open up my pores and, you know, maybe help with some hair growth. I don't know. It, it seems to help a little bit. Uh, no scientific evidence on that, I have to say that, but it just seems to, you know, stimulate and help a little bit. But, you you know, you put the shampoo on sham and shampoo it out. Then you put conditioner on. You leave the conditioner on for two minutes. And the conditioner is what really does do some tingling on your scalp. You can really feel it. Now, the problem is, and so many people have said it, and it has happened to me, is you'll be in your shower and... Like a lot of times in the shower, I will put my conditioner on and then I have one of these clips. I have one of these clips and I'll clip my hair up while I shave my legs or whatever I do. But when you have that conditioner on, it starts getting kind of on your face and it gets on your neck. And so many people have said, I've quit using the Nogson because it's stinging my neck and my face. So what... I think you're probably going to have to do one of two things. One of them is if you want to still wash your hair in the shower after you clip it up while you're letting that conditioner sit on your scalp, you're going to have to use some disposable. I've got tons of them. Uh, they're in the other room. Some of these disposable shower curtains, you know, that in fact, I think it's what it is for conditioner. And you can use them over and over again until they just get worn out and then throw it away and get another one but I will put it on and with the elastic and the snug fit it keeps it from dripping down into my neck and onto my face and so then when I take it off I do it inside out to rinse off all that conditioner let it dry and then the next time put it on again and then the outsides on the inside I will do it inside out and rinse all that off put it up start over again until it just gets too disgusting but that really helps a lot uh, the other thing that you can do instead is to wash your hair before you get in the shower, like either in your sink, your bathroom sink, or I have an attachment to my, my shower handheld attachment so I can lean over and do my hair that way. But you're going to have to have a little bit of a workaround probably using the Nioxin because it's got, I think it's got mint in it. You know, it, it's going to kind of burn, especially your face and your neck. If you use Retin-A or vitamin C serum, other things that are strong, you know how easily things will irritate those areas. And when I don't use it, my neck is red for days and days. Um, in fact, I, I slipped up and this is the first day. In fact, my neck is peeling. This is the first day that um, it's not quite so red. I was able to film. But maybe I should put it on more often if it's going to make me peel. But uh, no, I'm kidding. But uh, I have noticed that it will really irritate my neck and around my face. So that's just a little hint about that. Do it either ahead of the shower or put your shower cap on. I'm done. That's all I can think of. If I think of more, I'll let you know. And uh, uh, stay well. Stay well. Uh, love you all. I appreciate it. Be careful and have a good weekend. And I appreciate you watching. I really do. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.